Good morning, Graham students. It is Thursday, December 17th, and it is only two days of school left before we have a two-week vacation. We hope everything is going well for you. We hope you enjoy the rain today. We do have some announcements today. They're a little bit last minute, and so we have four different things that was cr that were created by our Graham GMS TV reporters. One is the history of Christmas by Karina. And then Charlotte has something out is regifting rude. And then Macy has come up with the Hanukkah history. And then last but not least, we have a words of wisdom winter. Check out. So here we go. This week is yet another spirit week. The theme is pajamas and stuffed animals. So come to the school in your pajamas and post a picture in the Padlet if you want to participate. The link was posted by Mrs. Mueller in the GMS TV Google Classroom. Happy pajama and stuffed animal week. Now we will give the answers to the guests that do. Christmas is a special holiday celebrated worldwide by Christians and non-Christians alike. There really are two sides of Christmas. There is the more religious side of it, and the more secular side of it. The religious aspect of Christmas is based on the birth, birth of Jesus Christ. The story that is taught in church is that an angel came to Mary and told her that she was chosen by the Lord to carry and give birth to his holy son. Joseph and Mary had to travel 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem in order to be counted in the census while Mary was heavily pregnant. Joseph and Mary could not find a place to stay, but a kind family offered their manger for them to shelter for the night. That night, Mary gave birth to baby Jesus and they laid him down in the hay. The Bible doesn't specify the actual date of Jesus' birth, but Pope Julius I chose December 25th. Many believe that the church chose this date to adopt the traditions of pagan Saturnalia festival. Centuries before the arrival of Jesus, early Europeans were already celebrating the winter solstice. When the worst of winter was behind them and they could look forward to longer days and extended hours of sunlight. First called the Feast of Nativity, the custom spread to England by the end of the 6th century. Now, the more secular side of Christmas includes Santa Claus, gift giving, decorating, and Christmas trees. People around the world have been observing Christmas with traditions and practices passed down over two millennia. One of the most popular activities is waiting for Santa Claus to arrive. The legend of Santa Claus can be traced back to a monk named St. Nicholas. He gave away all of his inherited wealth and traveled the countryside helping, po helping the poor and sick. This may be the reason why Santa is such an outsized symbol of Christmas, as it is truly the season of giving. Friends and families give gifts and celebrate being together during this special season in order to end the year on a good note and to shepherd in the new year. Although this year may be a different type of Christmas due to COVID-19, I hope you can still spread love with your family and have a happy holiday season. As the holiday season gets closer, people are starting to pick out gifts for their friends and family. But sometimes, instead of buying a completely new gift, you just give someone an unwanted one from last year. This is called regifting and is traditionally considered to be very rude. But now, regifting is becoming very popular. So, is regifting considered rude these days? Researchers have conducted polls where they asked people about how they felt about regifting, and they found that people who give gifts would much rather them be regifted than thrown in the trash. But sometimes gifts might be very personal or especially made for you, like a sweater knitted by your grandma. In that case, you probably don't want to regift it, unless you think your sister would like it and your grandma would be fine with that. So should you regift this year? That's entirely up to you. But either way, have a great holiday season. I bet you were wondering, what is Hanukkah all about? Do you want to know that? Yeah. So, 
It starts in Jerusalem in the 2nd century BC, when the Greek Empire was ruling power. The king Antiochus, um, what did he do? I'm pretty sure he stopped them from reading and stuff. Yeah. King Antiochus, make sure that the Jews didn't read Torah and didn't be like a Jew. Some Jews allowed this and they turned into a Greek, but there were some Jews that kept on studying Torah. If the Greeks saw them studying Torah, they would take out their, what would they take out? Heart? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 their dreidels. And they would start spinning their dreidels to pretend that, pretend that they were just spinning tops instead of studying Torah. Now, that got them out of trouble, but there was there was a guy named Judah. What did they call him? Judah Maccabee? Yeah, oh, exactly. Judah Maccabee. Now, Maccabee means hammer, and he was like a hammer. So there was a group of Jews that went along with Judah, and they rebelled against the religious persecution. They, like a miracle, they regained uh, control over the temple, and they won. Yay! It's like a miracle because there were so many, so many Greeks. It was a one to 10 ratio. There was almost no way they could ever win. Now, the temple was destroyed by Antiochus and they couldn't, they didn't have enough oil. Oh, buggers. To light their, what did they want to light? Uh, menorah? Do we have a menorah? Oh, that's right here. Yeah, you wanna hold that up? Stay. Yeah, so this is a menorah. They didn't have enough oil to light it. And they thought the light was going to only last for how many days? A single day when it needed to last eight. Yeah, so they thought it was only going to last one day. But in the end, it lasted eight days, like a miracle. Um, that miracle is why we celebrate the menorah. It lasted eight days, so that's where there's eight here, and then a shamash. This shamash is used to light the other candles. It's called a he helper candle. Now you want to hold this? Yeah. We also have an electronic menorah. There's different kinds of menorahs. Some have Maccabees on them. Some are different shapes. Some don't even look anything like this. This is the most common, but they, they come in all shapes. There's just one tall candle all the time. Except so yeah, it was all a miracle and that's why we celebrate Hanukkah because the Maccabees fought against the Greeks and rebelled. Rebellion. Good morning, Graham School. This is Lucy with a few words of wisdom. Benito Juarez, 19th century Mexican hero and statesman, said, Respect for another's rights is peace. Peace on earth means more than just peace between nations. It means peace between individuals like you and me. Each time we respect someone else's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, we create a little more peace in the world. So, as you move through this holiday season, ask yourself, am I respecting the rights of others? Am I respecting their right to enjoy a peace-filled holiday? Remember, peace on earth begins with you. With something to think about, this is Lucy. Make it a great day or not. The choice is yours.